Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. We begin tonight with breaking news. The North Dakota Bureau of Criminal Investigation has completed its report on the February standoff resulting in the death of Fargo Police Officer Jason Mosier. Thank you for joining us. Valley News Live was told that the investigation would be complete 30 days after the shooting. Today, we're getting the final investigation report 50 days later. It's very lengthy. Valley News Team's investigative reporter, Ashley Bishop, has been sifting through the documents all day and joins us live with more. Ashley. Andrea, the report is massive. We have 155 documents, each multiple pages, some as long as 79 pages. Many of the documents contain officer accounts and their roles during the standoff, from perimeter security to interviewing neighbors along with the Schumacher family. In statements with police, Michelle Schumacher says arguments began with her husband about around 5 p.m. He was upset that she had deleted contact information for a job that he was interested in. The situation escalated when Marcus Schumacher got a gun and made death threats to his wife. During an all-night standoff, police called Schumacher at least 50 times with no response. He was found dead at 4, 5.45 the next morning. The documents contain diagrams of Schumacher's house just like this one. In the medical examiner's list, we learn that Schumacher's body was found with two bullet fragments in his right arm and also his head. We learned from the report that bullets were firing everywhere, hitting garages, nearby hotels, even one person's car near Broadway, leaving them stuck. We know at least four robots were bought, brought in and, and used, and they were trying to get into the Schumacher home. The robots failed because of the cold that night. After the incident was over, police spoke with people in the perimeter about what they saw, heard, and experienced during the ongoing gunfire. Coming up tonight on Valley News Live at 6, learn about the interaction that one woman had with Officer Mosier just before he was shot. Andrea? All right, thank you, Ashley. We have much more information and many of the documents posted on our website. You can read it at valleynewslive.com. Just click on this story on our homepage. To new information now, Grand Forks Police have released a description of a suspect wanted in an early morning shooting yesterday. The victim, 30-year-old David Gomez of Grand Forks, is recovering from a gunshot wound to the upper body. It happened on the 1000 block of North 39th Street. Police now say one of three suspects they're trying to locate is described as a black male who is about six feet tall. He was wearing a tight black shirt, red bandana that covered the lower half of his face and had closely cropped hair. If you have any information about this case, you're asked to contact police. We also have new information surrounding the grand jury indictment of a Crookston man in connection with a Christmas Day bar fight that led to one man's death. 28-year-old Brock Strawman has pleaded not guilty to charges of manslaughter, assault, and disorderly conduct. 36-year-old John Torres of East Grand Forks died of a brain bleed a week after being involved in a fight outside of Captain Crook's bar. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson has the latest on this case. When my husband's heart stopped, that stopped mine. Back in January, three weeks after her husband, John Torres, died following a Crookston bar fight, Rita Sines and her family gathered at the Crookston Justice Center to protest that no charges had been filed in the case. Today, after charges in the case have been filed, she's still not happy the defendant, Brock Strauman, remains free. Strauman posted a $10,000 bond. A little bit of satisfaction in that uh, charges have been filed. No, I'm not. I'm not happy. He got to walk out last yesterday out of the courthouse with no handcuffs on. He's not in jail, and I'm not. I'm not happy. Details on what exactly happened outside this Crookston bar on Christmas Day are still very sketchy, since charges were filed by a grand jury. It's basically a secret panel of citizens that looks at all the evidence and decides whether or not to file charges. Earlier, signs told me her husband, John Torres, walked outside the bar with another man, came back in bleeding from his ear, and said he'd been jumped. Torres later died from a brain bleed. 
the only public information available from that grand jury indictment, says in part, Brock Strauman did engage in fighting, did engage in obscene or abusive language to arouse alarm, anger, or resentment in others. Strauman's defense attorney, Joel Arneson, has also declined to comment, so details as to exactly what happened here remain a mystery. In Crookston, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. Brock Strauman has been ordered to have no contact with Rita Sines' family and to stay out of bars. His next court appearance is scheduled for May 10th. We couldn't escape the clouds today, but most of us stayed dry. Let's find out from meteorologist Justin Fanfarelli if the rain will return. Justin? Yeah, thank you, Andrea. Good evening, everybody. Yeah, we had cloudy skies, a few passing showers, especially this morning, and we stayed dry through the afternoon. Some of us actually seeing some sunshine out there, and that is getting temperatures up nowhere near where they were yesterday when we were near 70, but we're holding at 55 in Fargo, 54 at Jamestown, and 51 right now at Devil's Lake. Wind speeds mainly from the north, a cooler flow between 5 and 15 miles per hour across the area. Now, we're seeing a couple of batches of rain, one uh, just to the south of Fergus Falls into the Sisseton uh, area, approaching uh, portions of southern Minnesota and another one up toward uh, Devil's Lake and Langdon. We are actually seeing a few peaks of sun, especially Fargo and points off to the north and to the west. Now as we go through this evening, we will have partly to mostly cloudy skies out there. Temperatures falling into the upper 40s by uh, early on in the evening. Then later on during the overnight period, we are back into the lower 40s with that northerly wind continuing. Now we are going to see cooler air as we go uh, through the next couple of days and uh, more chance for some showers, especially tomorrow afternoon. I'll have the details coming up later in the newscast. All right, thanks, Justin. Criminal charges will not be brought against two Minneapolis police officers in the shooting death of Jamar Clark. 24-year-old Clark was shot to death by police last November during a confrontation with two officers who were responding to a reported assault in which Clark was a suspect. Today, Hennepin County Attorney Mike Freeman said deadly force was warranted because officers Mark Ringenberg and Dustin Schwartz feared for their lives as Clark was trying to gain control of one of the officer's guns during a confrontation. The use of deadly force is justified if the officer reasonably believes that death or great bodily harm to himself or another will likely result if he does not act. Freeman also said Clark told officers he was ready to die. First, the FBI wanted information from Apple. Now the tech company wants info from the feds. Apple wants to know how the FBI managed to unlock the iPhone of San Bernardino terrorist Saeed Farouk. The feds used a third party to break into the phone instead of Apple. The tech company is afraid the FBI might have exploited a security flaw that could put customer information at risk. As of now, the FBI is not showing any interest in helping Apple. Farouk and his wife killed 14 people in December. Police are reviewing surveillance video after a break-in at a liquor store in South Moorhead. The burglary happened at Brookdale Liquors on 8th Street South around 3 this morning. That's just north of the Family Fair by I-94. Management tells Valley News Live it appears the suspects are two younger males dressed in bright colored hoodies. It's believed the men threw a cinder block through the front door and took about 12 bottles of booze. If you saw anything suspicious in the area during the early morning hours, you were asked to call Moorhead Police. Fishing season in North Dakota never actually closes, but on April 1st, anglers will need a new license. And for some, the way they buy a license may change. The North, Dakota, the North Dakota Game and Fish Department says paper license booklets are no longer available at licensed vendors. Officials say participating vendors will now need to sell licenses electronically. And it's not just fishing licenses that are changing. I mean, basically, April 1st, North Dakota Game and Fish licensing for fish licenses and small game license, basically everything but lottery goes all electronic. Hunting and fishing licenses can be purchased through the Game and Fish Department website or at licensed vendors. You can also call to buy a license, but you'll also pay a service charge. A Minnesota restaurant owner is getting a lot of attention for the way she responded to a homeless man who came in asking for money. Cecia Byres learned about a work ethic at a young age, so when a homeless man named Marcus came in asking for money, she questioned him. Why don't you work? You know that nothing is given to me for free. Uh, nothing's free in this world. Marcus told her no one would hire him. He said he was homeless and had a history of robbery and theft. 
but Byres decided to take a chance and hired him. Last weekend, Byres posted a photo of Marcus to Facebook sharing his story. The post has gone viral. She also started a GoFundMe page to raise money to help Marcus find a place to live. In today's What Is It? A healthy alternative for busy families. It's called Power Plate Meals, and it specializes in fast, fresh meals that are grab and go ready. They're located in West Fargo in the Pioneer Center near Maxwell's. So, how does it work? Well, those meals are prepared ahead of time, which you can pick up and reheat. You can also order meals online. Haley Swanson, the co owner of Power Plate Meals, tells Valley News Live the average meal costs about uh, between six and eight bucks. And Swanson says they hope to open their store by mid April.